Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV. Now I'm here at Communication with Daniel Enns of Comtec EF Data. Hello Daniel, we've spoken many times before. The energy sector, why are satellite operators now in demand? The energy sector is a growth opportunity, primarily given the high cost of where to find hydrocarbons. Uh, all the easy places have been used already and have access. So today we're offshore primarily looking at difficult places that require communications. And therefore, it is an area that as long as the barrel of oil is over $90, they will be looking and they will need communications actually in great quantity, bandwidth, and also reliability. And so that is our market sector that today we're seeing great growth, especially as the oil and gas prospecting is going more and more offshore. Now cost has always been a perception using satellite for some of these sectors. Is that now changing? Cost is always, uh, customers are always conscious looking for best communications, higher throughput, lowest cost of space segment. Uh, and the real challenge today is to be able to provide reliable, guaranteed services with SLAs and quality of service and that is today the equipment, the manufacturers, the ground equipment has gone, transformed great changes. Today in this sector we can provide multi-level QoS, we can provide great efficiency and as the capacity on demand is really what this sector requires is I like to buy capacity as I need and don't tell me how much a fixed cost will be. And so this customer base is really demand driven and wants to basically have from trickle capacity to on-demand video conferencing and also be able to do high data downloads, uploads for different files and or information specifically to that industry. Does latency still really provide a problem? Uh, latency is always an enemy uh, of, on a whole, uh, but we have certainly learned on how to mediate to a certain extent. Uh, O3B is also looking at a MIO that may provide somewhat lower latency. But in general, we really work on specific transmission medium that we try to minimize latency overall uh, and also at the same time do particular application level optimization that mitigates uh, latency to the degree that we can. Now, turning our attentions to another sector, that's cellular backhaul. That's in big demand, isn't it? Cellular backhaul, specifically for Latin America, Southeast Asia, or Asia on a whole, and to some degree in Africa, is in very high demand. Primarily driven by the evolution of needing to move into rural areas with data. We certainly have done a lot of great coverage in C-band for voice-centric mobile backhaul, but data today is becoming the demand and the driver. Challenge for data is that we have four, five, six, ten times more data requirement and bandwidth than we have for voice. And at the same time, a customer who's willing to pay less for that data than for the voice services. And so getting the total cost of ownership to work between space segment, ground equipment, and be able to deliver that data volume is the challenge today. But it is one of those areas that the mobile operator in some countries such as Brazil uh, and or in Latin America and Peru is by obligation he has to provide or basically become the digital divide uh, bridger uh, in order to really enable a new data-centric demand. And so this will see tremendous still growth in Southeast Asia, China, Latin America, and to some degree we'll also see that back in Africa. Now, mobile network operators, they're under pressure, but satellite is now becoming their friend, why? Mobile operators would probably, if the question was asked to them, they would say, we'd like to do it without satellite. Uh, we'd like to prefer to do it with fiber, we prefer to do it with microwave. Satellite is our last resort. But 
in many cases, distances and population density merit satellite as the only means of doing it. The Amazon Basin, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Southeast Asia, Indonesia are going to be, because of geography, always limited in terms of expanding the fiber networks or expanding the microwave networks. And so satellite becomes the only really viable means of doing communications and providing these services. Now, the trend to new high throughput satellites, greater bandwidth, what sort of problems does that bring for a company like Comta? The high throughput satellites is actually a blessing in many ways and at the same time a challenge. Blessing in the sense that we'll have more capacity through frequency reuse, perhaps have the right capacity in the right places, uh, and are looking really at also using or reusing C-band or KU-band and at times also KA-band specifically to get more bandwidth at a lower cost. So the good opportunity is that there is room for both KA, C, KU band HTS satellites that are more targeted specifically for the mobile operator. And so we're going to see that in places such as Brazil where actually certain uh, satellite manufacturers and operators will be launching capacity dedicated for the mobile operator. Uh, not necessarily for broadband services, but for trunking capabilities. And so that is what I'm saying is it is a growth opportunity. It comes at a right time. The challenge is really how to do this in smaller beams, higher capacity, and getting greater availability, which is very key to him, especially on bands such as KA. And so broadband has allowed us to do a lot of different things as best effort. The mobile operator is looking for reliable, resilient, guaranteed services. And as equipment manufacturers, we're really working hard at how to be able to use these different frequency bands and provide reliable, resilient, um, high capacity links for the mobile operator. And finally, going forward, what's the future for Comtech? What are you seeing? What are the trends? Comtech is, sees a great growth specifically in the area of data. I actually call it a data-centric era to come specifically for the Telco Selco, who will be requiring as ubiquitous coverage and specific targeted coverage to provide over-the-top satellite capacity for video, for data, and I see that really being sort of a growth market. On the other hand, the oil and gas that we talked originally with is a market that is requiring more and more and more of high bandwidth, on-demand capacity. And that is really where, although traditionally we've been branded as SEPC uh, versus the TDMA shared bandwidth, today our focus is really how to provide shared capacity in a SEPC-like modality or experience as the customer wants it and that is today the, the growth that we're seeing is really shared managed networks to provide and provision capacity that is done efficiently with great reliability efficiency is the, the key underlying metrics and that is the future I would say for the next two three years as we look at the market and satellite and in a data centric world. Daniel thank you very much. Thank you very much.